These are the stories making the headlines at this hour. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un labels South Korea as the main enemy, saying he has no intention of avoiding war on the Korean Peninsula. Meanwhile, dozens of countries jointly condemn North Korea's arms deals with Russia. South Korea's employment rate last year recorded the highest ever at 62.6 percent. Meanwhile, those aged 60 and above saw the biggest job additions as the elderly population grows. CES 2024 kicks up in Las Vegas, showcasing the latest AI technologies, including the future mobility sector, with Hyundai and Kia unveiling hydrogen value chain systems and multi-purpose customized vehicles. Good afternoon. We start with escalating tensions on the Korean Peninsula. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un has labeled South Korea as the main enemy. He said he won't initiate a war against Seoul, but he doesn't intend to avoid one. An Sung-jin reports. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un has said that Pyongyang has no intention of avoiding a war on the Korean Peninsula. The North state-run Korean Central News Agency reported on Wednesday that Kim defined South Korea as a state most hostile towards the North during his visit to munitions factories earlier this week. Pyongyang's leader also pledged to step up military capabilities for self-defense as he said peaceful reunification is impossible. This comes amid heightened tensions and North Korea's supplying of military equipment and munitions to Russia. Foreign ministers from nearly 50 countries, including South Korea, the U.S. and Japan, issued a joint statement opposing North Korea's arms transfer to Russia. The minister's statement reads that the North's export increases the suffering of the Ukrainian people, supports Russia's war of aggression, and undermines the global non-proliferation regime. It added that in return for the North's ballistic missiles, Moscow is providing key technical and military insights to Pyongyang. The statement strongly urged all U.N. member states to condemn North Korea and Russia's violations of multiple U.N. Security Council resolutions. U.S. National Security spokesperson John Kirby announced that following several dozen ballistic missile launches earlier, North Korean ballistic missiles were recently fired into Ukraine by Russia on Saturday. Our information indicates that the Democratic People's Republic of Korea recently provided Russia with ballistic missile launchers and several ballistic missiles. This is a significant and concerning escalation in the DPRK's support for Russia, I'm sorry, for the Korean Peninsula and the Indo-Pacific region. North Korea has been under a United Nations arms embargo since it first tested a nuclear bomb in 2006. The embargo prohibits the exports and imports of military weapons to and from the country. An Song-jin, Arirang News. The World Bank forecasts global economic growth to slow for the third consecutive year. It also sees the world set to record its worst half-decade of growth in 30 years. Lee sing has more. In its latest Global Economic Prospects report released on Tuesday, the World Bank says global GDP is likely to grow 2.4% in 2024, slowing for a third year in a row. The latest forecast follows 6.2 percent growth in 2021, 3 percent in 2022, and 2.6 percent in 2023. The World Bank cited poverty and debilitating debt levels in many developing countries for the latest forecast. It also said that excluding the pandemic contraction in 2020, growth this year is set to be the weakest since the global financial crisis of 2009. It also added that due to the aftermath of the COVID-19 pandemic, the war in Ukraine, and ensuing spikes in inflation and interest rates around the world, the first half of the 2020s is expected to be the worst half-decade performance in 30 years. Speaking to reporters, World Bank Deputy Chief Economist Ian Coes said global growth for 2020 to 2024 period would be weaker than the 2008-2009 global financial crisis, the Asian financial crisis of the late 1990s and downturns in the early 2000s. Moving forward, the World Bank expects global growth in 2025 to rise to 2.7 percent, marked down from a June forecast of 3 percent due to anticipated slowdowns among advanced economies. Major economies around the world are also expected to see their growth slow, with the U.S. forecast to grow 1.6 percent, down from 2.5 percent last year, while China is also expected to see growth slow 4.5 percent, down from 5.2 percent last year. Lee Seung-jae, Arirang News. 
South Korea's employment rate last year recorded the highest ever at 62.6 percent. Meanwhile, those aged 6 and above saw the biggest job additions as the elderly population grows. Park Geun-hye with the numbers. South Korea's latest employment figures have been published and are showing positive signs. According to Statistics Korea on Wednesday, a total of 327,000 jobs were added on year in 2023, which was actually a drop from the year before. But that was mainly due to the base effect, as the jobs market recovered in 2022 following the easing of COVID-19 restrictions. 816,000 jobs were added that year. The employment rate for those aged 15 and above in 2023 rose 0.5 percentage points compared to the year before, to 62.6 percent, a record high since data was first compiled in 1963. An official from Statistics Korea said increasing external activities and demand for babysitters after the pandemic helped to boost employment figures. By industry, sectors including the accommodation and food service sector saw jumps in employment of around 11,000 after COVID-19 measures were eased last year. But the manufacturing and wholesale and retail fields saw employment figures drop due to shrinking exports and more online transactions, respectively. Those aged 60 and above saw the biggest increase in job additions, with 366,000 added, while the number of people in that age group working passed 6 million for the first time last year. More people aged 60 and above and higher demand for employees in that age group in the health and welfare industry are factors behind job additions in the age group. She added that despite fewer additions for people in their 20s, the employment rate for young adults was quite high, considering population decline in that age group. Meanwhile, 285,000 jobs were added in December 2023 alone, a rebound from November when the on-month numbers fell. Park geun Arirang News. CES 2024 kicks off in Las Vegas, showcasing the latest AI technologies, including the future mobility sector, with Hyundai and Kia unveiling hydrogen value chain systems and multi-purpose customized vehicles. Shin ha young has the details. The world's largest annual tech show is back again. The 2024 edition of the Consumer Electronics Show, organized by the Consumer Technology Association in Las Vegas, commenced on Tuesday. As widely acknowledged, the key word of this year's CES is artificial intelligence integrated across a variety of industries. With generative AI in the last year since it's come about, there's a lot of very rapid developments, companies going into new areas. It's like the internet itself. It's, it's not just a technology, it's a fundamentally game-setting, changing technology. LG Electronics believes AI should bring better costume experience that is more caring. We all know AI stands for artificial intelligence, but at LG, we would like to redefine it as affectionate intelligence. With over 400 exhibitors showcasing their latest breakthroughs in vehicle technology, the spotlight at the trade show is on future mobility powered by AI. South Korea's Hyundai Motor Group is participating on its largest scale lever with both Hyundai Motor and Kia Motors making a noteworthy return after being absent the previous year. Hyundai Motor highlighted its commitment to leading human-centric life innovations. To do so, the company introduced its hydrogen value chain solution covering production and storage, transportation and utilization. It has also announced its software defined everything strategy, aiming to establish a mobility ecosystem that caters to users' needs anytime and anywhere through advanced software and AI. With an aim to go beyond the traditional concept of automobiles, Kia Motors unveiled its platform Beyond Vehicle, or PBV for short, which can be turned into a delivery vehicle or a private office based on users' needs. Meanwhile, South Korea's second-largest conglomerate, SK Group, built a theme park at CES to highlight how technology can be applied to improve the world and address global challenges such as achieving net zero. One of its affiliates, SK Hynix, showcased advanced memory solutions that support generative AI applications. The four-day event will run until Friday local time, bringing a diverse array of changes driven by AI to be used in daily life. Shin Ha-young, Arirang News.
President Yoon Suk Yeol promised that the South Korea's aging planned cities will begin redevelopment before the end of his term and that he'll get rid of regulations that go against the real estate market. President Yoon spoke on Wednesday during a visit to Ilsan, one of the country's first planned cities, where he held his second New Year's discussion for government policy with the public, this time focusing on real estate issues. He also said apartments over 30 years old will be exempt from safety reviews so reconstruction could begin right away. He also pledged to scrap the punitive taxing of multi-homeowners, saying the burden is directly transferred to tenants. Prior to the debate, he visited a 33-year-old apartment block in Ilsan and spoke to residents about what is needed in the upcoming redevelopment. South Korean lawmakers have passed a number of special bills, including a ban on dog meat and the launch of a new space agency. A reinvestigation into the deadly Itaewon crowd crash has also been passed, spearheaded by the opposition party. Our Ishi Hu reports. Lawmakers at the National Assembly's plenary session on Tuesday approved special bills that will establish South Korea's new space agency and that will ban dog meat consumption in the country. The special act for the establishment and operation of a new space agency passed with 263 approvals and three abstentions. The new space agency, which the science ministry has dubbed the Korea Aerospace Administration, or CASA, is expected to launch in Sacheon, Gyeongsangnam-do province, as early as this May. The agency will carry out research and development, policy-making, industry promotion, international cooperation and more in the field of aerospace. In response to the bill's approval, President Yoon suk yeol said South Korea has taken a great step toward becoming a major space power. Meanwhile, the so-called Dog Meat Ban Act passed with 208 approvals and two abstentions. It prohibits all processes of dog consumption, including the breeding, slaughtering and selling of dogs. Punishment for slaughtering dogs for consumption will be up to three years in prison or a fine of up to around 23,000 U.S. dollars. For the breeding and selling of dogs for eating, offenders could face up to two years in prison or fines of up to around 15,000 U.S. dollars. There will be a grace period of three years to allow for related businesses to prepare for closure. The opposition, amid a PPP walkout, also unilaterally passed an act that calls for further investigation into the Itaewon crowd crush in 2022. The act supports the formation of a special investigation committee so that those responsible for the disaster can be penalized. The PPP opposed the bill, saying that this would incite political strife and held a rally in protest. Eyes are now on whether President Yoon suk yeol will exercise his right to veto the bill. Lee si Arirang News. The United States' first private-led space mission to land on moon now has no chance of a soft landing due to fuel leakage. Meanwhile, NASA is also facing delays to its lunar mission, aiming to return astronauts to the moon this decade. Ian Jin has the details. U.S. robotics firm Astrobotic has announced that its Peregrine lunar lander has no chance of a soft landing after a serious fuel leak about seven hours after its launch. The moon mission was the first of its kind for a private U.S. company, but following its successful launch on Monday from Cape Canaveral, Florida, where the lunar lander successfully separated from the rocket, Astrobotic soon reported a propulsion system malfunction on the lander, which now has no hope left for success. Peregrine was attempting to become the first U.S. spacecraft to land on the moon since Apollo 17 in 1972. Meanwhile, NASA announced during a news conference on Tuesday that its Artemis program, which aims to return astronauts to the moon this decade, is facing some lengthy delays. The Artemis 3 mission to land humans on the moon for the first time since the Apollo program was previously set to complete this milestone by 2025 but it is now expected to not happen until at least September 2026. The space agency said that the primary reason for the delay includes two failed test flights in 2023. The tests in 2023 of Starship, which is the spacecraft that is expected to take astronauts from lunar orbits to the moon's south pole, both ended in explosions. Ian Jin, Arirang News. 
The Israeli military say they have killed another Hezbollah senior commander. With the intensifying Middle East tensions, refugee numbers surge in southern Lebanon. Meanwhile, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken met Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and urged Israel to avoid further civilian harm. Our Che Su Hyung has the latest. The Israel Defense Forces said on Tuesday that they killed a commander of the militant group Hezbollah's drone unit. IDF spokesperson Daniel Hagari said they killed Ali Hussein Bruzi, who had led drone attacks in northern Israel. Hagari mentioned that the attack was a targeted drone strike on a vehicle by Israeli air forces. On Monday, a senior commander of Hezbollah secretive Radwan Force, Wazim al tawil was killed in an Israeli airstrike. Meanwhile, International Organization for Migration reported on Tuesday that more than 76,000 residents in southern Lebanon have fled the area as the tensions are increasing between Hezbollah and Israel. UK newspaper The Guardian has reported that hundreds of refugees are arriving every day in Lebanon's southern coastal city of Tehran with fears of a possible recurrence of the conflict between Israel and Lebanon in 2006. Amid the growing conflicts, United States Secretary of State Antony Blinken is visiting the Middle East. In a meeting with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, Blinken emphasized avoiding further civilian harm in Gaza. He also stated that the U.S. will stand with Israel but called for aid to Gaza and fewer civilian losses. This immense human toll is one of the many reasons that we continue to stand with Israel in ensuring that October 7th can never happen again. It's also why we're intensely focused on bringing the remaining hostages home, addressing the humanitarian crisis and strengthening protection for civilians in Gaza and preventing the conflict from spreading. Blinken's visit to the Middle East is his fourth since the current conflict between Israel and Hamas militant group broke out in October. Che Su Hyung, Arirang News. The suspect in a fatal shooting of a South Korean tourist during a robbery last Thursday in Guam has been found dead. Citing the Guam Police Department, KUMTV reported on Wednesday that the suspect was found dead inside a parked car in the village of Jonah on Tuesday night. He had a self-inflicted gunshot wound and a gun on him. Investigators are looking into whether this was the same weapon used in last week's shooting in Tuman District. Police also found a suspected driver of the alleged getaway vehicle at a gaming room in Jonah and have taken him into custody. Let's take a look at the latest news in the world now. In Ecuador, outbreaks of violence in the country's largest city, Guayaquil, have led to a declaration of a 60-day state of emergency on Monday night local time. Police have also arrested gunmen who on Tuesday took over a local television station during a live broadcast. Guayaquil police confirmed 13 arrests of suspects involved in the hijacking of the Ecuadorian television station TC, where gunshots and yelling were shown on the live feed. President Daniel Noboa has also issued a decree declaring 22 gangs in Ecuador as terrorist organizations. This follows the escape from prison on Sunday of dozens of gang members, including Jose Adolfo Macias Villamar, the leader of Los Choneros criminal gang, also known as FITO. That escape unleashed a wave of violence across Ecuador, including the kidnapping of at least four police officers. U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin is undergoing treatment for prostate cancer. That's according to officials at Walter Reed National Military Medical Center on Tuesday, who said Austin was hospitalized on January 1st due to complications following prostate cancer surgery that took place on December 22nd. U.S. President Joe Biden was only notified on Tuesday morning of Austin's condition three days after he spoke with Austin on the phone. The Pentagon chief has been receiving criticism for lack of transparency in notifying the chain of command. The European Union's Copernicus Climate Change Service, known as C3S, said on Tuesday that 2023 was the planet's hottest year on record by a substantial margin. 
The C3S confirmed that on average, the planet was 1.48 degrees Celsius warmer than the 19th century pre-industrial period before the start of modern-day carbon dioxide emissions. C3S director Carla Bontempo also said 2023 is very likely to be the warmest year in the last 100,000 years. While the 1.5 degrees Celsius limit set by the Paris Agreement in 2015 has not yet been breached, the C3S said that the temperature recorded in 2023 sets a dire precedent. Kim ji Arirang News. Good afternoon. Most of the wet clouds have moved away from the peninsula, but Jeju and the east coast could see lingering wintry precipitation through this afternoon. It didn't snow as much as expected, but it was enough to cause roads to become icy and slippery with overnight freezing temperatures. So please stay safe on the road and walk with extra care. After the highs are much higher for upper regions today, but ratings are similar to lower in certain parts of Korea. Along with the rise in highs, ultrafine dust levels have gone up high again. The capital area, Chungcheongdo province, will be trapped in dust air all day. The rest of the south will see dust levels boosting in the afternoon. Highs are 1 to 8 degrees higher than yesterday. So tops out at 5 degrees, Busan at 10 degrees Celsius. Skies will get sunnier in the afternoon. We can expect much calmer weather through Sunday than a mix of rain and snow is in the forecast in the west of central areas. Then bitter cold air moves in next Monday morning. That's Korea for you, and here's a look at the international weather conditions. South Korea has passed a law banning the sale of dogs for food. Dog consumption has been a long tradition in Korea, like in China and Vietnam, but it has declined in recent decades, most notably when it was banned in Seoul ahead of 1988 Olympics due to international pressure. But legal controversy remains to this day because dogs are defined as livestock under the Livestock Act, but dog meat is not regarded as a food ingredient under the Food Sanitation Act, leading animal rights activists to say it is illegal, while dog farmers and restaurant owners say it is allowed. Now there's a strict legal basis that bans trading dog meat, with discussions now to focus on how to view the individual consumption of dog meat. <laughs> 